G'day viewers, I'm Simon Christie and welcome to round one of the ARB Australian Off-Road Racing Championship. Over 60 teams have signed on for this year. We've got a stack of veterans from last year. The tracks are wet, the fields are green, and even for the veterans, it's gonna be a very different race. It's the ARB Town & Country Tyres Stack Pool 500, and we're set for a huge weekend of off-road racing. Heat and dust are two of the typical factors that play havoc for competitors on this course. But thanks to recent rains and a change of date, things are looking a lot greener. Probably the best track we've had in five years, to be honest. Completely different, everything's green. What a great track, you've got so much land, so much space, so much decent terrain. It's an awesome track. The high speed stuff's great. There's places there we're just wide open throttle, we're pinned in this thing. These races, if you want to stand on the podium, you've got to go. You've just got to get into it, and if the car breaks, it breaks. It's as simple as that. Conditions are ideal, track's good. It's a magnificent place, it really is. Absolutely magical. I'm really happy to be back. Here we are at the first round of the ARB Australian Off-Road Racing Championship for 2019 at Stackpool in New South Wales. We're just here 22 k's from Gilgowie and a total of 60 k's north of Griffith. We've got 60 odd cars here that are going to um, compete over 500 k made up of six laps. And unfortunately we had a couple of cancellations earlier in the year due to weather events mainly. So this is the first round. Guys haven't raced in September, so they're all very itchy to get out there and get into it. Unfortunately, we've had a few cancellations due to the weather. It's out of our hands, but it's good to see the off-road communities getting together. It's definitely a bit devastating for those communities and families, but it's good to see that there's good conditions here and these guys had some rain and we can race. Droughts had a big impact on the series this year. We're so lucky to have access to this property. Yeah, we're all very lucky here. Andy and Bobby have given us the property to do our thing and we're all very grateful and we'll repay that by staying off the crop and doing the right thing. How pretty generous of you and Bobby to still keep it open for the motorsport. I wouldn't have it any other way. A lot of my best mates do this stuff, so I'd probably cop too much if I didn't. Some penalties have been put in place for anyone who does hit the crop. That's fair enough. I mean, this is uh, Andy's livelihood and uh, we're allowed to race here, so you know, we've got to respect the guy's land. They go off the track into the crops, that costs the landowner money, and that's the last thing we want to do. Being a farmer myself, you do sort of crops your livelihood, so you've got to make sure you look after that. That's really good that people show the respect to stay off the crop. It makes us feel really special. It keeps the racing nice and tight and fair. It does keep it fair. You only need one guy to be shortcutting, and he's obviously got an advantage. Probably something that had to happen in the sport. Things started to get a little bit loose, so it's good, that's for sure. On Saturday we'll see a prologue where people will do one lap of an 18 kilometre course to determine their starting position for what we call section one which is two laps of the 80 kilometre course. The results from that will determine the starting order for Sunday where they will do another four laps uh, starting at 8.30am. Along with last year's winner Talbot Cox of this event we've got quite a few big names here. We've got an excellent field. We've got competitors here from New South Wales, from Queensland, South Australia. The three Martin cars out of Victoria. Brent, coming off a big year, what are your expectations for this year? Just, just try and do the same thing we did last year and try and finish all the races. I think we've got the car and the team here to help get it done and get a good result, hopefully. As you said, we've got Talbot Cox here. Hopefully looking for a good place in Prologue, somewhere in the top five will be good. And it's a long race this afternoon and tomorrow. 
500 kilometres. It's a real good track. It's got a mixture of everything in it. It'll certainly challenge all the drivers and their cars out there. It's an actual privilege to be here on the Ryan property. Drought conditions are prevalent across the country. This area has had some rain just after Easter. As you will have seen by looking around the property here, it is lush, it is green, it is absolutely fantastic to be here. I think the weather makes 80% of the difference. Like today's just phenomenal. We've got a good field of cars here from all over the place. Well, I think it's gonna cut up pretty rough. It's going to take its toll, there'll be a few punctures, so yeah, it's really an endurance race, that's for sure. It looks really rocky and pretty rough. I think it'll be not too many cars finishing this weekend, it looks really tough. This year there are some special conditions to keep the competitors on the tracks. Given that the crop is coming up and it's the Ryan's livelihood, we've made an extra effort to ensure that they stay on the defined track around the property. We put white shuttles, big large white containers up around the course, blue drums. If they hit those, they make a mess of their car and mess of themselves. They're just trying to encourage people to you know, do the right thing and stay on the defined course. a few big hitters, especially outright out of everybody that we race against. They finish very high up there, always. Talbot having won it last year, he'd have to be favourite. There's Michael Marzon, who we race with, Clayton Chapman, he's pretty quick, Aaron Haby, they're the main ones that will be in my class that I'll be looking out for. It's always good to see a good field here, and the track's fast, cars will be fast, and it'd be fantastic to see who comes out on top. Daniel, different class racing solo this year too. Yeah, definitely. I have a really tough job ahead, I think. I've got a lot to manage. I had some really good people in the car with me the last few years. They made my job really easy. That's why we won two back-to-back -back ARB championships and uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of hard work, that's for sure. How important is your choice of tyres? Extremely, extremely, especially today with all those rocks and just preserving them I think is going to be key. We've done a lot of R&D with Jeff Newick. He's actually hooked us up with some Dick Seapec tyres which are a Mickey Thompson offset. So we're running Dick Seapecs on the back and a really nice pair of Mickey Thompson Baja Pros on the front. Fantastic combo. We've been running them all last season. We've done some pretty rocky races and some pretty hard tracks and that and we've had no trouble with them. So this will actually show up this weekend. I think it's going to be a bit of a tyre battle. Prologue complete, the top three positions are separated by mere seconds. Yeah, it was very close racing. I think there was the top five cars within 25 seconds of each other, something like that, it's crazy. 
In first position is last year's winner, Talbot Cox, followed very closely by Dale Martin and Craig Martin in third place. These three will take the top three honours for the start of this afternoon's race. We've got two hardcore laps this afternoon, followed by four tomorrow to make up the 500 kilometres. It may be cold here at Stackpool, but the racing action is definitely heating up. An update from the prologue Simon. It's just finished. The competitors have all attempted one run at the 18 kilometre prologue course. Last year's outright winner of the event, Talbot Cox, has come out on top. Second was one of the Martin team, Young Dale. He was 0.8 of a second behind Talbot. A really good effort given that Talbot's got a six litre car and Dale's got a three and a half litre car. In third place, Dale's dad, Craig Martin. Continuing on the family tradition, we've got 10 seconds separating the top six. And in these sorts of conditions, that's a very tight margin. Sandy, how's the racing today so far? Tiring. It's gone downhill real rough out there real quick. Today's racing's been fantastic. Yeah, we're having a ball out there. We've had a few issues on the second lap, but hopefully we'll get it sorted and we'll be back ready for tomorrow. And how will the rivalry go between you and your father? No, no rivalry. We all want each other to do well and whoever comes in front doesn't matter. Yeah, as long as we all have a good time, that's what we're here for. Caught a bit of dust in lap two and the rocks have all come to the surface now. You can come around a corner and there's a big rock sitting there that you just didn't know from the last lap, hit it and do a tyre. You had a pretty good run today, but a few things held you back. Yeah, get those runs sometimes where you get a good clean run and then other times you just get nailed by the slower cars. That's all road racing. I'm not too worried. The car's good, no drama, so we'll go hard tomorrow. Talbot, looks like things are going to plan. Yeah, we're going good so far. We've done two laps, had a good run with the car, so no problem so far. Last year, dust and heat were the killers. How is it this weekend? It's magnificent, absolutely loving it. It's great. Have you been enjoying the greenery as it races past? Love the green, mate. Green's money. <laughs> Considering how tight it is, you've got to have somebody with their eyes on the game the whole time? Absolutely, Simon. Timing at any motorsport event is critical. Here we have the team from offroadracing.com.au, in particular Julie Rogers, managing all the scoring and the timing for the event. So we're relying upon all the electronics and all the sensors in the cars and the antennas in the ground to give us very, very accurate times. We get accurate times down to a thousandths per second. Do you think there'll be drastic changes on the course from lap to lap? Oh yeah, we're in the front now, but it just takes one tyre to take you from the front to fifth or sixth. There'll be a lot of changes in position tomorrow and hopefully not us. It's a long race, 480 k's, so we just got to make sure we get through it. A bit of rain predicted tomorrow. Me as a farmer, I want the rain, but it can come after lunch. If the rain does come early, I'm sure it's going to grease the track up a little bit because it is sort of a little bit clay and, and slippery when it is damp. And the competitors will just have to adapt and drive to the conditions. It's good so far, but it's only two laps and another four to go tomorrow. So I reckon by the end of tomorrow it will be pretty rough and rugged out there. A nice long service break overnight. Is there anything you're focusing on with the vehicle? Uh, I had a CV failure at the Fink Desert Race, so we're just going to pull the CVs out, just have a good look at them, make sure everything's OK. Don't want to have that failure again, because that was very frustrating. The car's going well, and yeah, we're communicating well, and everything's good. We just lost the exhaust today, and that's about it. Will the fact that a few cars are out of the race help you tomorrow? There's still a lot of good quality drivers out there, so maybe just on sheer numbers, when the race format goes from two laps break to two laps, there might be a few less cars to pass out there in the second section, but you're still going to have to be passing cars, so I don't see too much difference in it. What will be your strategy for Sunday? Yeah, just go hard. First two laps, two laps at a time, and then the next two laps, and then just see where we end up. Hopefully we get a bit of a break tomorrow, and we'll just go hard. Like, these races, if you want to stand on the podium, you've got to go.
Good morning and welcome back to our coverage of round one of the ARB Australian Off-Road Racing Championship. It's cool, it's calm and it's oddly quiet here this morning. Teams have got four big laps ahead of them, 80 kilometres each for a total of 320 kilometres. We're expecting the terrain to change drastically, but the big question is, will it rain? Talbot Cox is the leader so far, but the Martins are tightly on his heels, as are a number of other top teams. We've got a big day of racing, 320 kilometres ahead of us. Let's get into it. We're expecting rain again today, so that's going to make it very interesting. There's a lot of big ruts in the corners because the ground's very soft. It's a bonus in one way, it keeps them on the track, stops them going off the track into the crops. But then again, the smaller cars with the smaller tyres bottom out very easily. It was a long race, 500 k's, and uh, sort of threw it all at us. Yesterday a bit of dust and then today with a bit of rain and muddy and slippery and it was pretty interesting out there, it was good fun. It's a fantastic track and the club's put on a great event as well. It's actually a nice scenic track, actually it's good. It was a bit hard to know where we were actually sitting there for a while because we sort of just thought, well, let's just keep going, that's all you can really do. And then and, and Clayton dropped out and we saw someone else drop out and we thought, well, we might get there. We had to keep momentum up. And when you're so close like that, it only takes a little mishap somewhere and you can just sneak ahead. For the 2019 ARB Town and Country Tyres Stackpool 500, in third place from South Australia, out of car 57, Liz and Aaron Havey. A few cars keep dropping out, we're going, oh, yeah, we're in the hunt now, so just kept going, kept pushing, so it's good. Great to be back in the hot seat with your wife next to you. Fantastic to have her back, it's good, it's good to be here, so yeah, it's awesome. In second place, in car 32, Michael Marson and Chris Colburn. The rain come down and uh, and my visor was uh, choking up with uh, fog and then we'd lift that and then mud slide down the inside. We had a couple of issues when we come in, a couple of boots were off and um, we sort of patched them up as good as we could and I was, I'm pretty surprised we actually got around two laps, so it's pretty good. And the outright winners of the ARB Town & Country Tyres Stack Pool 500 all the way from Townsville in Queensland, Talbot Cox and Craig King out of Car 16. There are some people pretty tight on your tail. Talk us through your race from lap to lap. We built a bit of a lead yesterday and that was a bit of the aim, but we just it's hard to tell where you are out there in relation to the other cars. There's so many turn back arounds and you just can't sort of gauge it. We actually thought people were catching us yesterday, but we fortunately put some time on. Then today we just went out there and just tried to preserve the lead. I'm really proud of it, it's a great outcome. You never know with off-road racing, like there's so many things can go wrong, so you never expect to win back to back. And yeah, if you, when you get to here at the end and, and to win two in a row, that's, man, that's amazing. This is round one of the ARB Australian Off-Road Racing Championship. What's next on the calendar? The next one on the calendar for the ARB Australian Off-Road Racing Championship is round two at Gundawindi in Queensland and that will be followed by the Pines and Jerry at Millicent in the southeast in September, the third weekend of September. 